I like to draw. I can't draw, but I like to draw. Uh, I, I'm really into ceramics. I make cups. Both my parents are over six foot tall. So uh, growing up, I wasn't aware that I was as tall as I was because everybody in the household was tall. Um, and then I got to, I started playing in sixth grade. And uh, it's just because I was a lot taller than everybody else. So I was a hot commodity. It was like being recruited for college in like elementary school. You know, I was a lot bigger than everybody. You know, people want to win. You know, um, have that drive to want to win. And then I started playing. Um, and the competitiveness of it, uh, being part of a team, you know, traveling, all that stuff, having, I have a twin sister, but it's just the two of us. So having that sort of like big family feel on a team, it was, I wanted that. I'm a very introverted person. I think that has something to do with it. You know, being a lot taller than everybody else, I sort of shied away from a lot of things because um, I just wasn't comfortable with myself at a young age. Uh, high school, you know, it was, it was in. It was cool to be on the basketball team, varsity basketball team, you know, and then I started, you know, feeling myself a little bit, got a little bit more confident in myself, and uh, here I am. <laughs> in elementary school, middle school, it was fun. It was fun to play basketball. You know, at, that, at, um, at the high school level, people did it. It was more a business, the business of basketball, you know, learning how to do certain stuff, the technique-wise, um, you know, wanting to win, wanting to beat out other people. It wasn't just a game. It was a game. It was fun, but it was it was more than that. I went to a mid-major school. You know, I wasn't. We played in the A10. We didn't really, aside from preseason and postseason, we didn't um, have any super great competitions. So we were like Xavier Temple. I wasn't expecting to be the the big Kahuna. You know, and uh, I'm I'm rolling with the punches. You know, uh, things will happen as they happen. You know, if I continue to work hard, then I will be. You know, the big, you know, I will be somebody, people will know my name. Phoenix waived me four days before training camp actually started, and I think it was the, as far as my career is concerned and where I am, concerned where I am right now, I think it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me, you know, as far as basketball is concerned. Um, they waived me. I, I worked at a nonprofit. I did a, a, a legit nine to five, um, you know, and I was miserable. Not playing basketball, I was completely miserable. I think that I, you know, pretty much associated myself with basketball. I, Jessica Adair, was a basketball player, not a nine to five, you know, social worker. I wanted to get in the gym. I got in the gym. I did a lot of, you know, drills and stuff on my own. Um, eating right, eating habits and stuff. And uh, Coach Joseph McEwen, he coached uh, me my first three years at GW. Um, he called me and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, what are you doing with yourself? And I was like, I'm working. You know, and he's like, you're not playing? And I was like, no, you know, well, you know, pick up, you know, doing stuff. He said, you need to be playing basketball. He said, do you want to play basketball? I was like, of course, you know, of course I want to play. And he said, well, you know, he's going to make a couple calls. He, uh, he and Coach Reeves coach together, you know, at GW. And, um, you know, he called Coach Reeves. And then Coach Reeves called me and said, do you want to come to camp? He's like, hey, are you in shape? You know, I was like, I'm in, I'm in decent shape. I'm not in the best, my best basketball shape, but I'm in decent shape. Came into camp, uh, you know, I did, I, Played to the best of my ability at that at that time, you know. Did what what I what I thought was going to help me make the team, and they liked me. You know, it's just a, just little things that I needed to tweak and fix. So I got waived. Uh, she told me go home. You know, you never know when the call is going to come, so stay on top of it. You know, exercise, eat right, stay in shape, and you never know when the call can come. And the call came, and I was ready. You know, and I think that meant a lot to her as a coach because she says you tell you know people something often, and they never. You, you send them away and they never come back, you know, with that particular thing fixed. Instead, I did. So they gave me this opportunity again this year. And I, I, lost, I dropped 30 pounds uh, from last training camp to this training camp. When I graduated college, I was 268 pounds. Um, diabetes runs in my family. And I was, I was sure that I was on the verge of, you know, getting diabetes. My grandma had her legs amputated from diabetes. Um, you know, my mom got diabetes and I was scared. Like, Literally, I was scared to be, you know, in that position. So I started eating right after I got waived uh, by Phoenix. I started that transition. I drink a lot of water, you know, empty calories and, and juices, sodas and stuff. I cut red meat, pork, um, carbs for the most part, uh, white uh, bread uh, carbs. I ate a lot of, you know, wheat bread, brown rice, um, vegetables, proteins, and cut a lot of sweets. I'm, I have a really big sweet tooth, so I eat a lot of like cakes and pies and stuff like that, so I had to cut a lot, cut all that. During the period of this season, I, you know, been picking up things from Brunson, uh, Taj, you know, picking up little things. Uh, Coach uh, Jim Pete 
uh, Coach Reeves, even Coach Shelly P with ball handling, all those sort of things, just picking up a lot of those things and they carry over to games and they help me perform better. I want to open a nonprofit. I, I really want to help um, at risk youth in DC. Um, I think that there's a, a huge area of concern with the at the high school level with uh, children in, in the district. And I want to open up a nonprofit, focus on helping them to, you know, overcome their, the obstacles within the city. I went to one of the, at the time, one of the worst uh, public schools in Washington, D.C., um, Anacostia Senior High School. And um, while I was there, I've had countless um, casualties, like uh, friends have been shot. Uh, I had a friend shot in front of me, um, you know, and I want those kind of things to stop. You know, I don't think it's like children killing children, you know, for, you know, areas that don't belong to them. Like, you know, you know, like uh, sort of like mini gangs or crews, they call them in D.C. Um, you know, they fight with each other over streets, but those, you know, those streets, those areas don't belong to you. So you're fighting for something that can be taken away from you in an instant. But they don't understand that because no one's teaching them that. So I want to, you know, open their eyes and let them know that there's there's much more out there than just that that block that you live on. But I am, I will be eternally grateful for all the support that I've gotten to get to this point and uh, further on, you know, further on in life, I'm, I'll be grateful for that forever.